Gary Payton's family helped shape his skills and his demeanor. Growing up on the mean streets of Oakland, California back in the day, Gary Payton became tough. And he was especially tough on defenses, guarding like a hawk and making offensive players mad. Let's explore Gary Payton's entire family and see what exact impacts they all had on him. So check this out. Al Payton's nickname was Mr. Mean, so you can imagine how hard he was on his son. When Gary Payton was born in 1968, Mr. Mean had already established his reputation as a tough and uncompromising individual. His demeanor didn't allow for any room for weakness or carelessness, setting high standards for Gary to live up to. Al grew up in Mississippi and was raised by a great aunt on old-fashioned Southern values, so he knew from the get-go what it meant to be disciplined, hardworking, and tough. Upon moving to California, he learned the hard way, in a time when resilience and tenacity were key survival traits, especially on the cruel streets of Oakland. The city was going through a period of intense social and economic struggles, marked by crime and poverty. As a matter of fact, Oakland was ranked as one of the most dangerous cities in America back in the day, and it still is today for certain areas. But Al Payton was no stranger to adversity, and his attitude and approach to life were a direct reflection of his gritty environment. He worked multiple jobs, often low-paying and physically demanding, to provide for his family. He tried his hand as a chef at a small local restaurant, and it worked out. Later on, Al applied to another restaurant, and they hired him as a chef as well. Working two jobs simultaneously, Al was able to make ends meet Kind of. The jobs were low paying, so he had to arrange another part-time gig, and he did. Mr. Mean got employed by a cannery where he spent extra hours just to earn enough to keep his family afloat. As you can see, money was important to Al Payton, and he wanted to keep little Gary off the streets. Quote, Money changes people's minds. I wanted to make sure Gary never had to sell drugs to get any. He would buy Gary sneakers, give him his car and daily pocket money, all to make certain his son could concentrate on his schooling and, of course, basketball, which turned out to be Gary's ultimate passion. In fact, it was Al who introduced Gary to the game of basketball. He built a hoop in their driveway and would often play one-on-one -on -one with the young Gary Payton. He brought the same intensity and discipline to these games that he had in his own life. Al Payton played college ball at Alcorn A&M so after graduating, he took up coaching at a local basketball club. This gave him the chance to further share his love for the game with young players, including his son. He would bring Gary with him to practice, giving him an early exposure to the sport. Every summer, Al would raise as much money as he could, and he would gather a youth all-star team, put them in a van, and drive all night to basketball tournaments in Las Vegas, San Diego, and Phoenix. The kids absolutely loved these trips, but also the lessons they learned from Al during the long van rides. He turned these journeys into opportunities for mentoring, emphasizing the importance of discipline, dedication, and passion for the game of basketball. Gary absorbed these lessons like a sponge, and watching his father's tireless efforts and determination had a significant impact on him as a person and player. Under his father's stern yet adoring gaze, Gary picked up on the nuances and tactics of the game. The skills he learned playing under his father's watchful guidance against tough older competition helped to shape the player he would become. His father's dedication and hard work became his motivation and inspiration. Most importantly, Al taught Gary to play scrappy defense and to pass the rock. If Gary wasn't defending or passing as he should, he would swiftly find himself on the bench. Al was not afraid to sit his son if he didn't meet the expectations he had set. Quote, I may have whooped my kids a few times, but I really believed that, rather than whooping them, I'd take something away. With Gary, I knew he loved to play, so if he did something wrong, I sat him down. Once I sat him down and put him back in, he'd take it out on the opponent. End quote. As to whooping, Al even showed up to Gary's math class once to humiliate Gary straight in front of the teacher for acting up in school and failing to complete his homework. Quote, Gary wanted to go to class and be a comedian, Al remembers in the same Seattle Times interview we mentioned before. Quote, because he was a basketball player, he didn't think he had to do anything else. I went in there and told his classmates, I'm going to show you all that he's not a little man, he's a little baby. And I kind of spanked him in front of everyone. 
That was that. Even in college, all anyone had to do was say, I'm going to call your father, and Gary would straighten right up. Man, Mr. Mean was really living up to his name. And although you might disagree with how he went about raising Gary in certain respects, Gary seems appreciative. He became sort of his father's copy, taking all of his father's values in terms of being hardworking and respectful. Not to mention tenacity and discipline. And they even look a lot alike. You ever notice how Gary Payton wears one earring? Well, he picked that up from his father. Basically, Al would wear one diamond earring back in the day, and Gary eventually picked it up himself, which shows how much he admired his father. Mr. Mean's guiding hand did not only shape Gary's basketball career, but also helped him become a man of strong character. On the court, trash talking wasn't just a strategy for Gary, it was a reflection of the unstoppable, indomitable spirit instilled in him by his father. That same spirit that got Al through his toughest times in Oakland. Off the court, Gary is respectful, humble, and always aware of his roots, never forgetting the struggles and sacrifices his father had made for him. Here's what Gary had to say about his father's impact on his life. Quote, Be your own destiny. Don't be a follower. My father instilled that in me from day one. You be the leader. You take control of your own life. End quote. Gary is forever grateful for the teachings of his father and credits him for the success he achieved. But what about Mr. Mean himself? What does he think about his nickname and his way of life? I'm not mean, I just believe in doing the right thing, Al Payton responded. And he did the right thing in terms of raising a man. He raised a legend in basketball and a pretty amazing person off the court as well. Al Payton peacefully passed away on September 2nd, 2015. But there's another person who played a significant role in Gary Payton's life, a person who wasn't as intense as Al, but just as influential, and that was, as you might have guessed, his mother, Annie Payton. Gary Payton's mother, Annie Payton, was a dedicated mother and devout Christian woman. Annie provided a balancing force in the Payton household. She was the gentle, nurturing hand that complemented Al's strict and disciplined approach towards raising their children. Living in East Oakland was tough to say the least. It was crazy back then, especially in the 70s. The area actually changed in a dramatic way during the seven years that intervened between the birth of Al and Annie's fourth child, Alfred, and their fifth, Gary. As Al was working multiple jobs, he was rarely at home, so Annie had to step up and shoulder much of the child racing responsibility. She juggled caring for the children, maintaining the house, and also managing to work part-time herself. But she never worried that much about her previous kids. Those seven years that separated Alfred and Gary really made a difference, and their neighborhood became more dangerous, erupting in more violence and crime during Gary's life. Annie worried incessantly about Gary's safety and his future. Quote, The other kids we never worried about, but we were worried about Gary getting out of here. Things changed so much by the time he came along, and he was the kind of kid who was easily led. As a loving mother, she saw that Gary's father was exercising a crucial positive influence on him through basketball. Recognizing a potential in her son, she decided to support his passion for the game wholeheartedly. She may not have been a big fan of basketball herself, but she understood that it was important in Gary's life and the role it could play in securing him a bright future. When Gary was in sixth grade, she and Al decorated the family's living room with basketball trophies, memorabilia, and quotes of their son's achievements. This collection included Gary's own trophies from school games, local tournaments, and even some autographed basketballs. This gesture signified their faith in Gary and his skills, and their support for his dreams. Imagine young Gary's eyes shining bright with excitement and pride when he stepped into that living room. It filled him with a sense of accomplishment and instilled a deep-seated belief, I can do this. That's what Annie wanted to embed in his psyche, and she succeeded. Not only was she a backbone of support, but she also instilled in him a strong sense of faith and ethics. Similarly to Al, Anne did her best to lead Gary away from the bad influences that plagued his neighborhood. She emphasized the importance of education and insisted that Gary did his best in school. The same determination and persistence that he showed on the court was expected in his academic pursuits as well. When it was time to choose a high school, Gary was originally supposed to go to Fremont High School with his friends. It was close to home and well known in his circle, but Annie intervened. She knew Fremont was not the right environment for her son. It was a place where his potential could get stifled, his focus could get diluted, and moreover, it was a dangerous place with the escalating violence and criminal activities. 
When a child got stabbed to death on the playground at Fremont High School, she insisted on Gary joining Skyline High School instead, which is a school located in the Oakland Hills, far away from East Oakland's tumultuous energy. This decision was met with some initial resistance, but Annie put her foot down. She just wanted her son to be safe, to get to quality education, and to have the chance to develop his basketball skills. And eventually, Annie's tough decision paid off. Skyline High School became a turning point for Gary. There, he found a nurturing environment that fostered his academic and athletic talents. Annie Payton remained a loving mother even when Gary grew up and became a celebrity basketball player. She kept worrying about his safety in the neighborhood, always checking up on him and making sure he wasn't getting into any trouble or meeting the wrong kinds of people. When he turned pro and moved out of the neighborhood, she was kind of relieved. Quote, there was a lot of jealousy over Gary because of basketball. He wasn't safe out there. They respect Gary now that he's moved out of Oaktown. Gary loved his mother deeply, even when she worried too much. It is obvious that her constant concern and vigilant eye made him more aware, more disciplined, and more driven to succeed. After all, he didn't want to let down the woman who believed in his dreams before he even knew where basketball would take him. When she passed away in 2020, Gary dedicated her this Mother's Day post, saying he misses her every day. And more recently, he posted a heartfelt tribute on Instagram, calling Annie Payton his rock and his first love. Quote, Happy Heavenly Mother's Day to my mother, hashtag Annie Payton, hashtag my rock, my first love, my mom was such a blessing. Thankful for so many memories that I will treasure forever. Love your mothers today and every day. You only get one. Missing her every day. Another woman that Gary Payton came to love was his high school sweetheart, who later became his wife, Monique James. Monique and Gary met at Skyline High School and became immediately inseparable. And I'm sure his parents had to really dig her because she was great not only in athletics, but also academically. And as a result, Gary Payton definitely looked up to her. She ran track and was herself a pretty talented basketball player. They had many similarities, so it's only right they fell in love. The relationship lasted through high school and college, but they didn't tie the knot officially for several years. The early 90s was a hectic time for Gary. He was making his mark on the world of professional basketball, and the pressures that came with being in the limelight were new and intense for him. Despite these challenges, Monique stood by him. Her supportive nature did not go unnoticed. Gary realized the value of having Monique by his side, especially during the tough times. Their bond grew stronger over time, and after years of being together, they finally decided to get married. In 1997, Gary and Monique exchanged vows in a beautiful private ceremony. This wedding was kept away from the media spotlight, respecting the couple's wish for an intimate celebration with their close family and friends. Their love story was a testament to their enduring bond and mutual respect for each other. Unfortunately, not everything was always sunshine and rainbows in Gary and Monique's marriage. As they raised their family and navigated through fame and public attention, things got complicated. The pressures of being in the spotlight started to take their toll, and over time, differences and disagreements began to surface. Gary reportedly was unfaithful, leading to further tension in their relationship. In 2012, after nearly 15 years of marriage, Gary and Monique decided to part ways. It wasn't an easy decision, but they believed that it was the best course of action for their personal growth and for their children's well-being. They finalized their divorce quietly, mostly away from the public eye, maintaining respectful distance from each other in media depictions. Monique is now a businesswoman who also manages to follow her passion for art and radio show hosting. She puts a lot of energy into co-hosting the Out of Pocket Radio Show, which is one of the top sports talk shows in the Las Vegas area. Sports was a big part of her life, and it still is. She continues to contribute to the sports community through her engaging discussions and interviews on her show. Despite the separation with Gary, they continue to co-parent their children, prioritizing the needs and happiness of their kids over their personal differences. They remain very invested in their children's lives, proving the strength of their commitment as parents. Now, Gary and Monique may no longer share a marriage, but they share a lifelong bond through their kids and the many memories they created together. Even post-divorce, they continue to ensure their children feel loved and supported 
embodying the real sense of responsible, loving parenthood. Interestingly enough, when Gary and Monique tied the knot back in 97, they'd been together for a decade already at that point, and were getting ready to have their third child together. So altogether, they have three children, Gary Payton II, Julian, and Raquel. Also, as I mentioned, the glove reportedly was unfaithful to Monique, and it is now publicly confirmed. He has another son from another woman, and they named him Gary Payton Jr. All Gary Payton's kids stay out of public attention as much as they can, seeking a more private life compared to their father's celebrity status, but there's one exception, of course, that you might be aware of, Gary and Monique's son, Gary Payton II, who has followed in his father's footsteps into professional basketball. He is the reason Monique proudly calls herself Mother of Champions. Born on December 1st, 1992, while his father was starting his professional career with the Seattle Sonics, Gary Payton II grew up watching his father dominate the NBA, so it wasn't long before he developed a love for the game himself. His nickname is The Mitten, a playful nod to his father's nickname The Glove, but he prefers to be called The Young Glove. Gary Payton II is also commonly known as GP2 in the basketball community. As you see, Gary Payton II could not escape his father's legacy, and the references to his father's illustrious career are constantly made. He takes it in stride though, and while he respects his father's achievements, Young Glove is certainly determined to carve out his own identity in basketball. It all started back in his high school years when Gary II was still unsure about his basketball future. A little known fact is that he even took up swimming and did it for an entire year at Spring Valley High School. But it was clear that his heart was in basketball. He racked another two years in Spring Valley, playing nothing but hoops. Next stop for Young Glove was West Wind Preparatory Academy, where he completed his senior year and graduated. His passion for basketball only strengthened, and he proved himself to be a formidable player, inheriting his father's competitive spirit. He went on to play two years at Salt Lake Community College before transferring to Oregon State University, the same school where his father had made his mark decades earlier. The transition to Oregon State was not easy, but Peyton II was persistent. He worked hard, honed his skills, and eventually became a key player for the Beavers. His efforts did not go unnoticed as he was named the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year twice, a feat his father achieved only once during his time at Oregon State. After college, Gary Payton II went undrafted in the 2016 NBA Draft, but that didn't deter him. He stayed determined, continued to work hard, and was eventually signed by the Houston Rockets. Unfortunately, after appearing in six preseason games, he was waived by the Rockets. Not one to give up, he continued to grind in the NBA G League for the Rio Grande Valley Vipers. His performance caught the eye of the Milwaukee Bucks, who offered him a two-way contract. He played in a handful of games for the Bucks and then was waived, but was quickly picked up by the Los Angeles Lakers. His stint with the Lakers was short-lived, with him being waived once again. You would think that these constant setbacks would discourage the young athlete, but Peyton II is not one to easily accept defeat. He continued to train and improve his skills, determined to show his worth in the competitive world of basketball. His perseverance paid off when he was signed by the Washington Wizards on a 10-day contract, but this opportunity too did not pan out long-term either. Once again, Young Glove found himself back in the G League playing for the South Bay Lakers. Nevertheless, his performances did stand out and his true level of talent came to the surface. Eventually, GP2 caught the attention of the Golden State Warriors. Recognizing his potential, the Warriors signed him to a contract for the 21-22 season. The young athlete finally found a stable footing in the NBA. The Warriors made it all the way to the NBA Finals in that season, and GP2 proved to be a major factor in those series. In Game 5, he racked up 15 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 steals as the Golden State Warriors rallied past the Boston Celtics 104-94. The Warriors went on to win Game 6, securing their championship title with GP2 demonstrating exceptional defensive capabilities and versatile skills on the court. Despite the constant comparisons to his famous father, Gary Payton II has proven he is more than capable of making his own name for himself in the NBA. After his stint with the Portland Trailblazers, Young Glove is back on the Warriors this season, and he is continuing to make both his father and mother proud. All of these challenges and obstacles he had to overcome. Man, to me, GP2 is the real deal. I would even argue that he has overcome more obstacles than his father did. Nothing was handed to him on a silver platter. He's had to earn everything he has achieved, making his journey all the more inspiring. And he's not done yet. 
As for Gary Payton, his family continues to be a source of immense pride and joy. Seeing his son make his own mark in the world of professional basketball speaks volumes for his legacy. His other children have also found success in their own ways and each contributes to the Payton family legacy in their own unique way. He has recently become a grandfather as well. His daughter Raquel gave birth to a beautiful baby boy named Jacoby Deuce. On his grandson's first birthday, the glove has posted on Instagram sharing a heartfelt message of love and pride. So the family lineage is in pretty good hands in terms of Gary Payton II, who's one of my favorite comeback stories of all time, and then of course Jacoby Deuce, who, who knows, maybe he'll be an amazing basketball player himself. But what do you think about Gary Payton's family? Let us know in the comments below, and if you want another video to check out, why don't you see what happened to Scottie Pippen? He's had a crazy life since the end of his career.